So, what can I say about Baba Rabat, the beatboxing tater tot that hasn't already been said by the great poets and bards of our time? Probably a whole lot. But instead of that, I'll just leave him with a bit of advice. Try not to go having a bunch more kids while you're gone. And now, here's a story about a kid that stabs old ladies in the back in church. Enjoy. Don't leave, don't leave now. Please don't take my heart away. Promise me just one more night. Then we'll go our separate ways. Hello, 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 boys and girls. Guess what? Guess what, Chris? Uh, chicken butt. That and we fired Robert. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure he will argue that he quit. Well, but um, it. You know, he started to outshine us, and we can't be having that. Mm-mm. No, no, no. We said take your hairy ass back to the woods where we that, found you. That's right, where you belong. You, and this might be insensitive to some out there, but I was like, you Sasquatch-looking motherfucker. I'm, so- I'm sorry I used the S word, and, you know, <laughs> I regret it now. But sometimes people just don't take the hint. I mean, but Cousin of the Yeti just doesn't roll off the tongue. I think that is no more PC. Freaking Yeti American, whatever. No, you know what? I think Sasquatch is the PC word, and Bigfoot would be the racial slur. Mm. That's our word, he would say. Um, but, <laughs> unfortunately, or I suppose if you hated Robert, fortunately... Um, we didn't hate Robert though. We liked having no. him here, and and he really he really did, at, <clears throat> especially with his last episode. He, I, I think he finally found his real footing and and knew how to maybe not control a show because we went off quite a bit, but he knew how to how to run one. He knew how to do one. <clears throat> he certainly so, he certainly dealt with our antics with more ease this time. Right, right, right. So it's sad to see him go, and he will be back every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, honestly, we just fired him just just to get our chops wet, you know. Mm-hmm. So for when we get a bunch of interns, we're going to be firing them left and right. Right, and you you have to once the first one's done with, it's like ripping yeah. off a band aid. That's yeah, like, yeah, you you're gotta, fired. Just, you're fired. You gotta shake the jitters out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You're fired. Mm-hmm. You're fired. You're no, fired. No, no. Cross any, you. Anybody that, cool. anybody that says you're fired with that accent is fired. <laughs> you're cool. Huh. And fuck you. I'm out. That's right. Um, so, uh, Robert, again, you will be sorely missed. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, you didn't die, but someday you will. And we want that to be a peaceful rest. Um, yeah. But yeah, for yeah. now, just... One you know, after you listen to this and you go to sleep tonight, uh, sweet dreams, buddy. And if uh, I die first, I'm haunting you both, just so you know. Well, you are going to see me masturbate a lot. Um, oh, so, yeah, I knew that. Right. So, uh, we, we figured, um, <clears throat> I mean, we know our audience pretty well by this point. Uh, from the fact oh, yeah. from the fact that we don't know our audience at fucking all. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? But your your silence really does speak volumes to us, uh, and those volumes are: I'll listen to you talk, but you know, I don't really feel like talking to you, mm-hmm. and that and that's cool. That's cool. Um, that is uh, the bulk of my my home life, really. Uh, <laughs> but I was gonna say that's the bulk of my bathroom life. <laughs> we, uh, oh, I'm saying oh, a lot again try to cut that out guys sorry about that but we thought that maybe just maybe if we asked our wonderful beautiful goddamn just like 
Remember how hot Cindy Crawford was in the really early '90s, like after her after her weird, awkward '80s phase, but before her weird, awkward mom phase. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. That is exactly how I picture every single one of our listeners, and it helps with the masturbations. So I used to have a Cindy Crawford poster, believe it or not. I I do believe that you used to have a Cindy Crawford poster, even though I always found Kelly LeBrock hotter, but. Maybe that was just because of weird science, uh, and you know she showed there that at least her acting personality could be a bad girl. I hear you. I, see, I was always like, uh, you know, seeing the Breakfast Club. I always liked the weird, nerdy pixie stick sandwich girl, right. not not Molly Ringwald. That was, you know, I I've never been Agreed. the uh, the uh, mm, I've never liked the. Oh, I'm so pretty. Don't you think I'm pretty? Look how pretty I am. Right. Because then you just got to spend all day going, yeah, you're pretty. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're so pretty. And, you know, sooner or later, you have to ask her just for your benefit. Well, don't you think that I'm pretty, too? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So this is me asking our beautiful Cindy Crawford-like listeners, don't you think I'm pretty, too? Yeah, because it doesn't matter what I think, guys. No, I could give a shit less. But um, we want you... I mean, well, if you want. If you think that you could... I don't know, like, uh, if you could hang with us in the speaking of the weird, the wild, and the wonderful on this very show here, give us uh, an email because... Not necessarily looking for another host, but maybe we could have like a, hey, listeners, maybe you don't suck as badly as your no emails to us ever in almost 50 goddamn episodes suggests. Seriously, 50 episodes is quite a few. (laughs) Like, that's... uh... Not not a single solitary email. (laughs) We've been doing this for quite a while now. Well, I mean, not quite a while. We almost still, a year. The episodes is, is well, it's, a, it's a lot. We're gonna be coming up on a year in like two months. You can listen to us for an entire week's worth of work, and then some. Mm-hmm. And and you should and you should do it on an '80s boombox with a whole Adidas jumpsuit and a Kangol hat on. Hell um, yeah. But uh, email us at see no hear no speak no pod. Mm-hmm, at, mm-hmm. That is literally all one word at gmail dot com. Or because the aren't much all emails all yeah. one word. Or, or the much so. much 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 easier s n h n s n pod at gmail dot com. Um, you know, and you you certainly don't even have to just email us if you want to uh, try your hand at, at doing this with us. You could just email us and tell us how your day went. We'll That's act true. like we will act like we care. Contrary to what Rob wanted you to believe, we really don't want your your gross what is this pictures. Mm-mm. Rob uh, wanted those. He just I, wanted yes. to say I can, that Jason wanted them so you know so that you know. And I will certainly at the end of this episode be giving Robert's personal email address out so you can send <laughs> him all of that. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, That'd and be great. <laughs> you know, uh, I know that we made it seem like we'd got Rob here just so Chris and I would have someone to make fun of, but that was all. That was, I mean, it was more of a happy accident than anything. Yeah, I mean, so, we never stopped making fun of each other. No, you know? no, no, no. Literally, every single time I call Chris, he calls me a chicken fucker. That's true. Every time. That's true. And then I make fun of him for liking, I don't know, it, literally everything he likes, I guess, is, is laughable most of the chicken, time. <laughs> chicken fucker's a pet name, though. I know. Yeah, it's, it's very sweet. Endearment. It's very sweet. It's what my, my grandpapa used to call me. Um, oh, goodness. I mean, but that was mostly because I, I, I used to fuck chickens. But do that. And, uh, the past. and on that, that note, welcome to a... Man, can we really just do it with two people again? Episode of 
See no, hear no, speak no. <laughs> uh, the UFOs, the conspiracies, the... Um... Nah, I, mean, I think we could pull it off. Yeah, and, and the murders. And speaking of the murders, uh, yeah, we decided, uh, just out of the blue here, that this month of, what are we in, August, mm-hmm. I guess, uh, it's going to be all murder month. All mm-hmm. murder, all month. Yeah, because Rob uh, really brought an enjoyable episode last week, and I, it was a great one for him to go out on. But we figured, because uh, Chris and I were having a little chitsy chat afterwards, and we're like, wow, man, there's, uh, there's just so much great, and you know, this is the first one of the month, and, and we're getting real close to 50 now, and fucking, yeah, this is going to be terrible, horrible uh, serial killer month, basically. So today, uh, Chris has told me the name of this guy, but I didn't want to look him up at all. Uh, one... Good. Because I like to be surprised. And yeah. two, because I'm just super lazy. And even though Chris told me the guy's name again maybe ten minutes ago in our phone conversation, I've, already, <laughs> I've literally already forgotten it. So, uh, Chris, can I ask you one more question? Yes, sir. Is it, o- is it okay to laugh again? Uh, it's not only allowed... It is, it is acceptable. It is encouraged, even. Sweet. Yes. With because a, with, with a little gonna have simulated pat on the buns and, you know. How do you it? simulate a pat on the buns? You can think about it really hard. Well, that's just, that's just, uh, that's just mentally. your imagination. That's, that, it's not simulated. It's mentally like a, simulated. Simulated, you, you have to, I mean, a simulation is like a. You know, like going for it, but maybe like stopping right before you. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, wrong choice of words. Thank yeah. you for pointing that out. No, you're welcome. Either way, <laughs> I'll send you the virtual pat on the buns. Is that the right word? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know, what I, I like mean? it, Chris, sir, mm-hmm. honey, sweetie, baby doll. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, since since Rob decided to do my my favorite guy, um, <clears throat> I decided to go with my other favorite guy because I have I have two, uh, I have two, uh, and this guy <laughs> is on the other side of the spectrum, and this is the the reasons you'll the reasons I love this guy, which we'll get to towards the end. Um, this is going to be an interesting story. It's it's a fun one. It's um, it's different. This guy this guy takes the cake at the other side of the spectrum for a whole different reason. Like for he's just a different kind of guy. So anyway, who we're going to be talking about is um, uh, this Polish kid named Carol Cott. Carol Cates. Cott. 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 Carol Cott. Carol Cott, uh, who lived from uh, December 18th, 1946, to May 16th of 1968. He was 21 years old. Which is uh, why Chris still is going to refer to him as this kid. Oh, shit! And what in the fuck was my that? I fucking coffee all over my bed. Awesome. Ooh. Do you want to you take a quick time out? Yes, I really need Okay. To. So, uh... Damn it. So I mean, we might as well just let it keep recording, and I'll I'll, I'll oh, put this all out. It fucking sucks. All over your bed, you did, huh? Yep. Baby, Chris just spilled his coffee all over his bed. She laughed at you. That's wrong. That's very God, mean of her to do. That really fucking sucks. It sounded good. Yeah, good. Yeah, so but now I got even more background. That, that's fine. It, it'll it'll give you it'll give it ambiance. 
which, as I uh, said last week, is, uh, what is that, like uh, 80% of romance is ambiance and location. It's all about the big score, Chris. The PT. You said something like that. Uh, <clears throat> something along those lines. I don't know. I can't remember every single profound thing I say <laughs> on this fucking show. Profound. <laughs> Right. <sighs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Whenever you're We're ready. All back. And it is. Um, well. Eighteen minutes and thirty seconds. Ready. Okay. Well, let, let's let's count Never it back mind. in. You ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> and. Bang. Uh, so, Chris spilled all of his coffee over himself and his bed. Yeah. And probably over his two Taiwanese lovers that are chained up in the corner. They did get a little sprinkle, yes, and they were happy about it because they are deprived of uh, water right now. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they haven't bathed in over two years at this I, point, Chris. It's really about they're time. They're very resilient, so maybe, though. I haven't broken them yet. I'm, I'm not telling you that you should unshackle them. I'm just saying maybe bring them a dog bowl full of water. I mean, they got baby wipes for... That. I'm not a total savage. Anyway. Um, you can't be giving them the baby wipes you just cleaned your fucking dishes with, though, okay? Moving on. So, back to... Carol Cot, 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 Carol Cot, Cat, 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 Carol Cot. Carol Cot. Yes. <sighs> now, this guy, uh, unlike... And sorry about the background noise, kids. It's my uh, ambiance, as we were saying. Don't you dare apologize for ambiance. It's ambience. raining like fucking crazy out here right now. I am in uh, Salisbury, North Carolina. Don't just be making up names of places to sound <laughs> cool. Salisbury. Um, okay, so Carol Cott, unlike many other serial killers or just many other fucking crazy bastards um he did not have a bad home life um his father was an engineer for the army and his mother was an activist for the league of women which i'm not really sure that's like no that's like with wonder woman at the head instead of superman i was meanwhile at the league of women i was thinking it was something like that yeah I, ju- I had just never heard it um, before because I didn't know Poland had their own. Oh, they do. It's uh, fuck. no, I don't. I don't know any colloquialisms of Poland, <laughs> so I, I can't. I can't really. Let's just go with um, uh, there was a, a sausage lady. We all know what was in your heart, Jason. We we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna start with his early ages early ages. Uh, Home life wasn't bad. His school life was fairly normal. I mean, he um, he was noted by the teachers as being a good student. Uh, Always showed up to class, always did what he was supposed to do. Um, uh, As far as the students, the other students were concerned, he was noted as being... uh, more uh, like strangely introverted and I say strangely because it was just like extra like he didn't talk to Uh, anybody and it right 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 they didn't like they picked on him they called him names just like all kids do you know they bullied but but he wasn't violently bullied or anything he wasn't right right everybody everybody gets a ribbon every once in a while yeah but he didn't have his ass kicked on a daily basis type of bullying right so I mean, yeah, for, for the most part, normal kid, you know. He, um, he had a, a knife collection. He enjoyed... Just like any other normal I, kid, I get it. He enjoyed collecting knives. And because his parents knew um, <coughs> how, you know, he didn't really have a whole... He didn't really have any friends. Uh, they were just happy that he had a hobby. You know, he had an interest in something. So they were happy to give him money to buy new knives and stuff like that. You know, as good parents um, would be. Oh yeah, I mean, 
No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, you know what? I, I, my trepidation should should not be there because if they had no reason to worry, then fucking a knife collection is a perfectly normal uh, thing to have and to make and to collect and and things like that. If uh, there is no there, there's no fear that he's going to turn them on them or someone else nah, or whatever. So this yeah, is a good kid. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. Nothing he's a good to kid. worry about here. I mean, look, he 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 was doing well in school, and he got into um, the shooting club at school. Ooh, sweet! Right? Uh, quickly becoming coach's favorite student. Yeah. You know, he got in good. He was yeah. good. I mean... Well, I mean, you know, is it really hard to be shooting coach's favorite student when you're, there's only two of you in the shooting? Well, I'm sure I would not know. I've never shot things in Poland before. Or been in a club. That's true. Nobody ever wanted me in that mm. club. Still don't. <sighs> anyway, thanks for bringing that back up. Um, yeah. <clears throat> At one point, uh, he he had won several, you know, tournaments and whatever, things like that, that the shooting club does. He was actually, uh, at one point, ranked 10th in uh, the Polish juniors category for the, for the sport. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah, both him and, uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, Scott Bayo. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Bayo, hell of a Polish shooter. Hell of a Polish shooter. Now, did he shoot mm-hmm. Polish, the Polish, or was he a Polish person that shot stuff? Because I always thought Bayo was an Italian name. No, no, you're wrong. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to say he did both. Fair enough. Yep. I think that's... Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Um... So yeah, man, he was uh, he was doing good. He was well liked amongst the community and such. Um, he was coach's favorite student to the point that uh, the coach made him deputy of economic affairs of the club. Wow, deputy! That's uh, that's quite the responsibility. It was you have to actually you have to count all of the yep. guns and you have to count all of the mm-hmm. kids um, so you have to be able to count to two um, and then it's mostly just uh, taking naps and high-fiving people so not too bad no, it wasn't a bad job he, he was actually uh, he was actually entrusted with the keys to the weapons and ammo store hmm I don't think you should ever entrust the keys to the weapons and ammo store to uh, to an adolescent. Um, that's just me, though. I am not a very trusting fella. I would rather know that a responsible adult has the keys to the dead making. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he showed good face. Coach liked this kid a lot. Coach liked him. And, and because... Um, <laughs> it was actually uh, something that he was quoted saying. I, I don't have the page pulled up. I didn't write this particular quote down, so it's not. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not quoting him, but it was something along the lines of um, later on after he's you know uh, arrested and interviewed and stuff. In one interview, he he was um, he made mention of having the keys to the guns and ammo storage. <laughs> Um, and he said, uh, at that point, he had the means to kill everybody in the town. <coughs> well, that is certainly bragging yeah, rights. Well, yeah, I mean, he didn't, but he made mention that he could have. Oh, well then, you must be uh, a good, kind-hearted citizen. Maybe we should just let you go. Now, see, here's the thing about that, right? So, yeah, children and, and kids and young adults, they they have, you know, the teen angst and, you know, there's some angry kids here and there and yada, yada, yada. It's hormones, yeah. man. Hormones running wild in those teens with their pimply faces and their their 
they're dropping voices and they're dropping testicles and they're they're boners at the weirdest right. times, especially during right. gym. Why don't they make gym shirts longer? Well, that's a good question. That's a really good question. And and uh, I'm sure if you write a letter to your uh, uh, which what's the head of the school board, you know, you can address such things. I say we step over them. We go to the guy who's really in charge, and we send a letter to our local gym shirt making factory, mm. and and say, "What the fuck, man? Do you, you know how many boners I couldn't hide because I was wearing your stupid ass you shirt?" Speak Korean? I don't speak Korean. I don't think mm. we can talk to that guy directly. Well, I mean, that's why you, that's Google Translate, <laughs> man. You could live anywhere and go anywhere and complain to anyone. Yay! Thanks, guys. <laughs> We'd be happy, happy to advertise. <laughs> Just let us know. Um, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, see, that that's the thing. So, that's, I mean, at this point, you know, in our story, he's still a good kid. He, make, he made mention later that he could have done it. But at this point, he's just thinking about it, which a lot of kids do. You know, it's not a crime to sure. think about the fact that you got all you got access to all these guns, and people are shitty. You could just mow them all down and go on about your day. Now, at the same time, you gotta also think about, um, you know, a lot of times when kids are are, are younger people. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hi, dogs. Uh. Fuck. We got coffee, we got dogs, we got we got our show uh, happening. <laughs> this this is certainly an episode of <laughs> Oh, you sons of bitch and Love dogs. You guys with Chris and Jason. Oh, speaking of, I was gonna make mention of that um, earlier when you had you know said that Tris is just the third, blah blah blah. Instead of the third, mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna change it to the last. I don't think that you have that I'm power. I'm gonna have a child that is named after me, so I will be the final. No, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have that say. How is that? You cannot tell me that the extension to the nickname that I made up. <laughs> I can't change my own. Is name. you you cannot do that. It's not in the nickname. Not without rules, payment. Huh? I'm gonna need the forms filled out in quadruplicate, and I'm gonna need the twelve hundred dollar quadruplicate form reading fee. It's gonna have to be reviewed by the board of trustees and such. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Non-refundable. Fine. This is not a deposit. <laughs> this is an administration. So the fee. kid. The kid, right? So he's so he's drinking coffee and he's eating pies, mm-hmm. and he's got all these guns, mm-hmm. right? So he's just like, he's just what kind of pies do the killing it make? with the uh, sausage Yo. sausage pies, mm, mm, hot dog pie. <laughs> oh yeah, there's so many sexual innuendos going on there. <laughs> so. Uh, so he's just he's he's just absolutely killing it with the ladies, right? Am I right? That's that's you would think. It, maybe if he was I would, in America, I would think. he would be killing it with the ladies. Oh, but one, one thing I was going to say though is, you know, a lot of times when when kids or young adults who do things uh, or even remotely close to what this kid um, is on file for doing, uh, you know, when they make quotes and you know they make statements and they give their interviews and such a lot of the things they say are to fluff up their image you know what i mean at that point it's like yeah right it's image fluffery it it's uh it's standing in line for the uh the gangbang and having the uh the ugly chick uh smack it around a bit i get it so good analogy i like that um yeah two points two points for you (laughs) um (laughs) I'm keeping it tally. By the end of this episode, though, I'm going to leave it up to you guys and you, Jason. I'm going to need you to tell me at the end of this episode whether or not you think that's what right. this kid is doing or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, got you. Got you, got you, got you. Okay. Yep. That, that's going to be our poll mm-hmm. for this episode. Um, it's going to be our Polish. <laughs> Polish. <Ooh>. Uh, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> he was such a model student to this coach that the coach invited him over to his house 
at one point to hang out, you know, have a sausage barbecue, uh, (laughs) introduced him to his kid, which obviously he already knew because the kid was in the shooting club as well, but basically sat him down and uh, told the kid that he needs to be like him, like more like Mr. Carol Cott because he's such a good student and he shoots like a fucking dream and um yeah so i mean yeah that makes sense you you have this model uh this model gun shooter uh in your your gun shooting club and when you are gun shooting club coach that is literally the only thing that matters in the world so you want your child who is also in gun shooting club to look up to and try to emulate this gun shooting club phenom who is the um what was he the uh the director of of count and stuff the what deputy was it? of economic affairs god he couldn't even he couldn't have, he couldn't even have been the fucking sheriff of economic <laughs> right. affairs <laughs> um, no but uh you know also he was you know he was a pretty good student like he didn't do poorly in school necessarily um it was right. later said that you know that he um he did apply for a, a specific college that he wanted to go to and he didn't get in but um that was i forget why they said he didn't get in it was something weird it wasn't like your normal you just were a shitty student and they, they don't allow it it was something strange right um <clears throat> i heard it was because he had a lisp i and uh, i think it was because uh, his dick curved to the left uh, a bit too much it was almost like a candy cane oh goodness like it like he had to like I don't know, like face backwards to the toilet, or you would pee. On yeah, the they're like, you're not gonna come romping through here, drinking up all this Polish beer, and and just peeing all over yourself in front of everybody, swinging this happen. giant hook at people. No, it's not. It's no, not I a, get it. Um, I but, get it. However, he did wind up getting into a uh, technical college for uh, sciences and stuff like that. So either way, like. Technical things. He was, yeah, a, I get it. He, he was a good. He was a good student. He didn't get into trouble at school. He was pretty much, you know, the kid to be looked up to as far as the coach was concerned. Well, I, well, I mean, I heard that he got in on a technicality. <laughs> uh, that was not funny. No, and I shouldn't have stopped your flow for it. And I apologize. And please continue. It's okay. Uh, we will, however, come back to uh, to the coach. We have something later to talk about the coach. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on to um, the fact that he was an avid reader also. He um, oh. yeah, he, he had a nice little collection of uh, human anatomy books, uh, toxicology books, uh, forensic right. medicine. Mm-hmm. So uh, he fancied himself quite the little thinker. He's either going to be like Poland's best doctor or he's going to be Poland's best uh, <laughs> do- doodler of dangles, I guess. <laughs> Jack the Ripper impersonator, maybe. <clears throat> um, so okay, so at, at, there was one time when the family visited visited Auschwitz. Okay, that's that's uh, a destination for a, a family vacay. I get it. <laughs> I guess. In in the sixties or the you know the the late fifties, I didn't think that there was a, a thing as like dark tourism and such. I mean, I don't know if they were doing well, it for that same reason. Or... I don't know. Maybe they just happened to find themselves there. Maybe Ugh. maybe they were it, maybe they were in the town uh, surrounding it, and they were like, "Huh, well, uh, you know, we were trying to walk to the the candy store and and." Sure are a lot of shower buildings around here. <laughs> so, as they were, uh, you know, enjoying the tour, I guess, of uh, Auschwitz. Mm-hmm. La- fucking laugh a minute. He yeah. uh, was reported, uh, or it's on report, that he professed a desire to have been born earlier so that he could have commanded one. Um, okay, wow. First of all. Second of all. I sincerely thought you were about to tell me had 
the biggest awkward moment? <laughs> Probably. No, wait. There's a couple of uh, quotes here that I do actually have quoted. Please, please, please. Uh, he says, quote, uh, that he was amazed by the organization and the idea of a concentration camp. Um, quote, I dreamed about mass murder in gas chambers, roundups, and dividing people. I wanted to murder all women. End quote. Hmm. Don't know what he had against women. His mom seemed like a pretty cool chick. Hmm. She bought um, him knives and stuff. What more could a kid want? Hmm. Uh, and there's more shit she let him do too, because he's she's just she's she's a, she's a loving mom. You know, I'm I'm at just uh, somewhat of a loss uh, for words after those, those <laughs> quotes because if if my child ever uh, expressed a a wistful uh, longing for running a concentration camp, uh, it's it's time for. Uh, I mean, do you, is it therapy, or do you just put them up for adoption and say you're somebody else? Well, these quotes were made to the interviewer, or to an interviewer after. Oh, so maybe he didn't come right out and say, Hey, Ma, you know what? I really wish I could have worked here. I'd have been employee of the year. I'd have been killing, killing them Jews and <laughs> making the trains run on time and making sure all of that, that Zyklon B was <laughs> was in the in the tanks you see so it's shower time Jews let's go I want to work here let's do it now. Nazis are not funny by the way kids but no no but if they all talk like that <laughs> it'd be a little it'd be a little funny <laughs> yeah no I really I like I don't think he said ooh mom you know I want to do this <laughs> when I grow up yeah not I hate all women mom like can you believe it now, you know keep in mind his parents were were, were smart and did have uh, they had a lot of shit going on, so the the quality time probably wasn't there. Uh, as far mm. as him having a right. bad home life, though, nothing like it, no. But it but it's like the the absentee intellectual parents. Yes, not, they're not abusive. They're just not fully available uh, either parentally or right. Emotionally. Not necessarily neglectful, but also not available. Right, and, and that makes. That makes mm-hmm. perfect sense. So you could build some resentment to that as a that that actually really reminds me of uh, Moskvin because his parents right. were you know these super smart fucking people and so was he and um, you know god damn it smart people right. out there it doesn't matter how smart you are and how many speaking uh, lecture tours that you, you have to go on and things it's d- talk to your yeah. kids man because they are for a fact thinking <laughs> of either murdering. <laughs> people or digging up the bodies of the recently deceased and making them dolls to accentuate their home decor Talk if your, your kids. kids have no friends at all try to find a way to get them into some sort of social interaction something you might be a there redneck there are places mm-hmm. that nerds hang out like they, they just because ah nah. anyway so <clears throat> Yeah, but, I mean, okay, so he may not have come out and said those things directly to the parents while that was happening, but there are mm-hmm. some other things that were, some, some other red flags that uh, should have been, oof, should have been pounced on, for real. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Let's hear it. Uh, so, on another family vacay, at mm-hmm. one point, um... The okay, so the place they went, I'm not even going to try to pronounce. It is spelled P C I M. I, I pick them. Okay, so they went to pick them. <laughs> All, right. All right, and uh, I don't know what the fuck pick them is, but apparently somewhere nearby there was a local slaughterhouse. <clears throat> Our dashing young student. Mr. Cott mm-hmm. wandered in. Our hero. And uh, mm-hmm. started talking to people, you know, checking shit out. He was standing around watching. He was bullshitting here and there. And uh, he asked to assist. And they allowed him to assist in the killing of pigs and cows and such. That is a very, very irresponsible butchery shop. Oh, it gets better. 
they not only allowed him to assist in the killing, they also allowed him to assist in the rest of the breaking down, if he want, as he desired, as well as um, slashing the throats and going with a cup to gather some of the blood and drinking it wow. in the middle of all okay. of these people and an actual production hmm. factory going on. Well then... Um, next you're going to tell me that they also allowed him to sodomize with them before they killed the animals. Ah, no, that's the one thing he was not, was a, was a sexual killer in any way. I didn't say that he enjoyed the killing sexually. Oh. I just said that well, maybe, just maybe, he joined in on the sheep hmm. fucking. How, um, how amateurish of me to have it just assumed. Yeah, you are a stupid uh, bastard sometimes, Chris. I'm trying not to let it rub off on you. So, um... <clears throat> Ew. Yeah, because I'm rubbing something else instead. Um, yeah, so that that right there earned him... That and other acts of the same type of nature earned him the name the Vampire of Krakow because that's where he was, was Krakow, Poland. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so after the uh, family vacation to the slaughterhouse, <laughs> what is really going on in Poland, I do not know. But if we have some Poland, Polish listeners, yeah, hit us up. Let us know. Yeah, tell us. Uh, would you rather have a Disneyland there? <laughs> what is the appeal to uh, vacationing at a slaughterhouse? Um, so after that, uh, he was... He was noted to have been glowing, basically. Just like smiling from ear to ear type of... He's beautiful. Enthralled with this newfound joy that he has in, in the act of killing things. Uh, that he starts wow. to uh, take it home. And he starts messing with the family cat. Like torturing little oh, bits no. here and there. I, it doesn't. Yeah, oh, it doesn't no. ever say that that he actually killed the cat. It doesn't say specific things that he did to to the cat. Uh, I didn't want to know, really. But um, it just <clears throat> yeah. said he 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 fucked with the cat quite a bit. But uh, he also moved on to torturing and killing uh, frogs, uh, crows, and magpies, mm -hmm. chickens. Oh, not magpies. Right? Moles oh. and uh, calves for fun, and drinking their blood as well. Wait, yeah. just for fun, or for fun and for profit? fun and practice? Oh, practice for profit? No, no, no. See, that's the thing. He didn't get to that point. What about profit practice? I mean, if by profit it's profiting from the experience of the practice, then yes. Yeah, man. No, it's, it's it's all about having a fulfilling life, doing something that that's makes what you it happy. Is. That's exactly what it is. Sweet. Sweet. And I believe that's pretty much the code he lived by. Mm-hmm. You know, he was uh, he was free like Carl, but, you know, he, he had a different way of thinking about things, different way of looking at him. So, yeah, he would also drink the blood of all those different animals as well. Um... He, his mom said that he, whenever she would have a live fish that she had to prepare for dinner, um, mm -hmm. he would stop her from killing it so that he could gouge out the eyeballs and um, lick mm -hmm. the blood off of the fish's face at, and she's like, go ahead, mm -hmm. son, my sweet little mm -hmm. prince. This is exactly how we envisioned having children would be. Please. Yep. And when she would bring home, like, meat, like cow meat or, you know, stuff like that, uh, like actual cuts of meat, um, he mm -hmm. would hang them up and shoot them with his gun just to see the power and effect of the bullet in the flesh. Right, 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 because who could resist? Um, you know, Chris, I am, I'm going to go on record early here and say that uh, I blame the parents. <laughs> you think they were enablers? <clears throat> I, I don't know exactly if they were enablers. I think that they were, 
Um, not ready to rear a child? That's probably a good assumption. Yeah. Or maybe they were just drunk all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that could be too. Wait, wait, you want to... You want to do what to the fish? Pfft. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, yeah. Fish time. Fish time. Mommy's got to go lay down. Uh, it was also said, because he had a little sister, that when the parents weren't around, he used to... I just got super worried, man. What's that? I just got oh. super worried. <laughs> he didn't kill her. Okay. He didn't kill her. He did everything else, though. He beat, beat the shit out of her. Oh, so he she... tortured her a little bit. He used to fuck with her mind. So and... she probably wishes yeah, she was dead. Most likely. Well, she was yeah. not... Yeah, she was not uh, mm-hmm. living a normal life with this kid around. So, see, and that's fucked up because he got to live a normal mm-hmm. life. So what the fuck, man? Free. Uh, as a bird. <sighs> so, yeah, um, as far as the... Uh, torture and killing and mutilation of animals went uh, he well, another quote uh, that he said to his last interviewer was um, did you know the easiest way to the heart is through the back um, like of people or like of things in general I guess things in general <clears throat> okay I mean, I don't know if either are true, so I don't know why I asked the question to to clarify. Yeah. No I idea. mean, for people, it, it would make sense, like under the shoulder blade, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, you don't have like a full rib cage back right. there, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that was just just a little tidbit. He just a neat little factoid. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was a studier of uh, anatomy and such. Of course, he, liked he was that kind of stuff. He was a smart kid. For academic reasons. Yeah, yeah that's the <laughs> so ticket. So he, he desperately wanted to be in the <clears throat> army. I say desperately, but it really wasn't like... like He just... He had a dream to be in the army so he could be trained to kill and go kill people legally. It doesn't say that that's exactly why, but come on now. When you when you listen right. to this story, well, you know <clears> that's <throat> why. That's uh, it's quite a bit different from MLK's dream. <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, I will defend to the death his right to have Indeed. said dream. Indeed. But I will condemn with my words his actions put forth to realize it. This kid's? Yeah. Uh, he turned around uh, in, in pursuit of his dream to join the army. He uh, taught himself knife throwing because he had all the knives. Mm-hmm. Why not? And um, yeah. karate, it says. I okay. can't imagine I mean, I he think, was proficient I think, at it, but... <laughs> I think you meant to say karate. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Polish karate, though, so it's mostly uh, uh, sausages made into nunchucks. That would be awesome. Mm. And yep. every fifth swirl around, you got to take a bite. I do believe I now need a uh, set of nunchuck dildos. I don't know why they don't make them yet. I think I'm legally allowed. Oh, to I'm have sure those. they do. I'm sure that they do. Yeah, because you, you just call it like this is double penetration without all the sticking That's together. That's right. That's correct. And the mushroom mm. tattoos. <laughs> See? You never go ass to ass. I mean, unless it's on film. That's how you get in. That's how you get an infection. <sighs> there are preparations for that. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I'm I'm sure people that are used to going ass to ass take those preparations, Chris. There are rules to the game. Anyway, moving on. Ah, <sighs> shoots and ladders, you son yeah, of a bitch. Not, not, that's not this kind of episode. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, there were um. Yeah, there was a little there, there was a little bit of angst going on here. Like he, he was he was an angry kid. It seems. Uh, really? Because I haven't gotten that impression at no, all, Chris. I mean, yeah, he hasn't really done too much of anything. You know, he hasn't heard. No, I was be- I was being sarcastic. Yet. I was I was absolutely being sarcastic. This kid is already a piece of garbage. <laughs> he is an awful, awful human being. It gets mm-hmm. so much better. Um, Yay! So there was a kid in school 
that uh, he tried to poison with arsenic. He put uh, he put mm-hmm. arsenic in the kid's orange juice. Guacamole? Okay. And uh, the kid went to drink it, but he noticed it smelled funny, and he poured it out. Smart Trax. kid. Smart kid. Because I would have been like, wow, this smells funny, but I'm so thirsty. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, maybe it's just on its last oh, well, day. No big deal. Mm-hmm. That's right. You never yeah. know. Expiration dates are just suggestions anyway, I hear. Uh, yeah, they're usually just a sell-by date. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, his plans were thwarted. And I totally picture this kid as being like the uh, the dick dastardly type using the words like curses and, you know... You foiled my plans. <laughs> foiled again. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't. But I totally do now. Thank you very much. Oh my God, Drax! Yeah. He says, as he wrings his fists in <laughs> anger and and contempt for the world. Well, ah. see, because it, because the thing is that this kid used to, like, he 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 would stick around to see what happened. He didn't want to just set traps and then walk away most of the time. Now, there were a few times mm-hmm. where, where he did have to wait to see if his traps went off. Uh, mm-hmm. But for the most part, he wanted to watch it happen. So, yeah, right, I right. totally picture him setting the orange juice and fucking tiptoeing to duck behind a pole or a plant or something and, you know, and peeking, <laughs> peeking through the foliage and <laughs> oh man when you said duck behind a pole I'm like he is yeah. in Poland so <laughs> just literally behind any person Damn there <laughs> I totally didn't even think about it um, <laughs> but yeah that's the, that's what that's what gives like I, I'm, I'm picturing the, the piano do 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 you know it's <laughs> fucking he's, yes He's yes. that character, oh and you know, you saw the pictures he, of him we, too. I, you, I could picture it. I, I, I saw the pictures. I forgot what he looks like, but I'm pretty sure he had a long handlebar mustache, and he was wearing a top hat and cape with a monocle. Pretty mm-hmm. sure. No, there was no, no monocle. monocle. You didn't see. He that? was a kid. His eye. No, his eyes yeah, were no, fine. It was all he, for, okay. for the for the image. No, no he said he lo- made him look a little bit too. It made him look a little bit too much like Mr. Peanut, and he wasn't into that. <laughs> the Polish Peanut. Because he, he he was on record uh, earlier in his life saying that he would like to kill every Mr. Peanut. So Every peanut in the world. That's a lot of peanuts. No, just, just every Mr. Peanut. <sighs> Pretentious bastard peanut. Why, yeah, why does a peanut need a monocle, a top hat, and a fucking cane? You guess as good as mine, sir. I mean... Just give him like a sweet electric guitar and a fucking like like a cowboy hat, or sunglasses some shit. and a leather jacket, that, like Joe Cool. Yeah, that that's a fucking Mister Peanut that I want to hang out with and smoke fucking camel Hell, cigarettes with, yeah. you know. Anyway, right there with you, brother. Here, here. <clears throat> so, yeah, he uh, he he did have one friend. He had one friend that that was on record as being his friend uh now obviously this person wasn't his friend after all this shit went down um that's fair right but um <clears throat> it, was, it was a girl who was in his sports club and she was also an okay. art student um okay her name was denuta and they because of right. course it they was. They don't give her last name because she was young when it happened and whatever. Actually, I think she mm-hmm. was a little older than, like, a year or two older than he was. But um, right. Either way, he uh, uh, in an interview or whatever made mention that she was his girlfriend. Although it's not at all known for sure whether or not she uh, unsubstantiated yeah. girlfriend account. Right. Yeah, Understood. As she was, I, I, I bet she was from Canada too. <laughs> ah, they're all white. Um, <clears throat> she, she was the only person that he talked to, the only person that he trusted. So for quite a while, he was confiding stuff in her, and um, she was quite the sport about it. 
<clears throat> oh, so she heard the terribleness. Yeah, then. like he would tell her about uh, fucking with animals and and you know the the trip to the slaughterhouse, and he would. Oh, yeah, wow. like. I mean, was was she into it? Or well, no, that's the thing. I think she just kind of humored him. She just mm. kind of like she didn't she didn't buy it at first. She didn't believe him. Oh, so she was like, ah, whatever, bullshit. Right. And because, but but I think like and and there was a situation where later on it, it'll it'll this is what made me think that <clears throat> because she wasn't. Uh, the word put off by it right uh, is what made him not necessarily drop his guard around her but continue to confide in her these things you know mm-hmm. so yeah um, she basically yeah didn't take him seriously but but he just continued to spill his beans about the fact that he wanted to hurt people and that he liked doing this stuff to animals and that he had um he tried he she he told her about uh trying to poison the kid at school um Hmm. and then one time they went on some kind of school trip or something and uh he i guess pulls her off to the side and goes to kill her he grabs her up and puts a knife to her throat well, you know when uh, when you when you know for sure that you got to be double F, <laughs> um, you can't let forever be that long, because you don't want to be disappointed one day when they're like, "Look, I met this other guy who uh, who only thinks about hurting animals and people. He never tries, and he got a big old dick." So I think I'll be hanging out with I don't know a Polish name. Uh, Shlomo, I think I'll be hanging out with him from now on instead of you. Check out so. the grass on the other side, you know. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Play yeah, ball. I mean, it's it's said that um, what the investigators and the, and the police think saved her life in this situation is that she laughed it off. And she goes huh. on to say, to tell him, mm. ah, ha, ha, something along the lines of, well, you know, if you killed me right now, who do you think would be the main suspect? You know, Ooh. we've been bullshitting together all day. They know we hang out. Like, don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh, okay, cool. You know? Thanks for the advice, mm-hmm. friend. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Fucking <laughs> this uh, field trip, Jesus. Yeah, <clears throat> so that happened, right? And then, uh, and then begins the fun parts. Now, actually, that uh, that scenario, that situation with with uh, little Danuta, happened in between his actual crimes. Like his actual crimes only oh, okay. only go on for about two years, and then but that oh. happened uh, somewhere around the middle point of, of what was going on. So 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 then she uh, theoretically, I still don't know what this guy's done. I'm guessing train robber. Uh, she would have not been his first victim. Correct. Yeah. So he probably had been thinking about her quite a bit up at. Who's not thinking about Danuta all the time? Danuta, (laughs) Danuta. Man, I just... I really wish there was a Duran Duran song about her now. (laughs) Seriously. Her name's Danuta, and she got away from a I'm surprised Barry Manilow never wrote a a ballad. A Danuta ballad. It's just such a musical... Just It's it's got like a a melody to the name, Danuta. Mm Manilow. Mm-hmm, Love mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so down at Danuta, <laughs> Duna in <and> Poland. <laughs> so I, yeah, I figured I figured I'd mention the Danuta thing right there uh, because it, you know it was just a real short little piece of it wasn't a whole lot of details to it or anything like that. Not a mm-hmm. whole lot happened, but believe it or not. 
that wasn't the straw that broke the camel's back for her. <laughs> Where'd he get a camel? In Poland? That's a good question. I bet you it was Joe Camel. Oh, man. Acting all cool, smoking cigarettes, getting kids to yeah, do it too. He wanted to play pool so bad. The smooth, rich taste of camel cigarettes. Camel cigarettes. Uh, so, let's see. What are we doing on time? Uh, we got about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, well, I'm debating on whether or not to uh, yeah. dive into some of his crimes right now or well hey I'm gonna take a like a, a serious just you and I uh, Zach Morris uh-huh. time out right now uh, okay so one two three uh, time out uh, keep it going though cause I, I dude I have to pee so <laughs> fucking bad that's alright that's alright And let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. A Zach Morris time in. So, ignoring the fact that I just took a two minute urination mm-hmm. break, let's get into Carol Cott's Mysticata, if you will. Mysticata. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ow, my ears with your coughs and Apologies. stuff. I wish I could do a, a, a Horshack voice. Uh, who? I just, I can't remember. The the, the nerdy weird guy from um, Welcome oh, Back, Cotter. yeah. Yeah. I can just do Mr. Cotter, <laughs> you know. But, uh... <laughs> that's really more of a late stage uh, Travolta. But, uh, so... We've heard about his his um, interest mm-hmm. in uh, let's you know biology and in anatomy mm-hmm. and in toxicology, ke- toxicology, chemistry, maybe uh, even probably yeah, some chemistry, some uh, forensic sciences. In his best friend's uh, jugular, mm-hmm. which I. I as beautiful and lovely as her name is slash was, I can't remember it because I had to pee that bad while we were talking about it. Denuda? Denuda for Nuda. Denuda. Oh, man. I'm going to change it Denuda. to Fun Nuda. <gasps> you can't be changing people's names, Chris, for the last fucking time. You do not have that power. Well, I, th- I just think Fun Nuda has so much, you know, nope. peppy. I think the har- I think the hard D at the beginning just really sets <laughs> off the rest of the name. I think I think Fanuda is you, you don't know where to put the act, the the you know, the emphasis and it's just so this kid because he's still a kid, correct? I mean he he died a kid at tw- at twenty one year old's a fucking kid. Um, but, yeah, so he. I mean, he's still like high school aged or college aged. He was what, born what, in going on in Poland? Uh, and his mm-hmm. first. Um, Charged, I say that the first attack or whatever he was charged with, uh, let's call it an right, oopsie, happened yeah. in September of '64. So he was 12, no, 20, 46, four, 46 to 64. So he was, he was 18. 18 yeah. All <laughs> right, so he he had been drinking Polish beer for eight years at this <laughs> yeah. point, and only allowed to eat their sausages for one year, though. Little known fact. You have to be at least 17 to eat a Polish sausage in Poland. Or you have to, you have, to have a note from your, your, your parents uh, signed and from your city councilman signed, and you have to take a test. And the test, you'd think it wouldn't be that hard. It is, though. It really is, guys. It's easier just to wait till Unless you Unless you are the star pupil of the uh, gun club, and then... That's right. Unless you're a star mm-hmm. shootist, and then doors and panties just fling wide open for you. 
all day, I think every wide day. Wide open does actually uh, that works for doors and panties, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like a curse. Yeah. All right, cool. Now that we're on board there, <laughs> um, resituated. So yeah, his <coughs> let's uh, let's move on to his first attack. <clears throat> okay, so September of sixty four. He gets the fun idea to mm-hmm. go and uh, he got the 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 knife, uh, the bayonet, off the end of a gun, right? And he sticks it in his jacket mm-hmm. and up his sleeve in his jacket, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he goes and sits in a church and waits for somebody to come okay. along. It, all of this sounds like you're you're doing uh, a Mad Lib. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and a cheese, and waits for somebody to squish along. I like it. We should we should do more Mad Libs. <laughs> Seriously, I fucking <laughs> love Mad Libs. <laughs> so yeah, so this um, he was later on. He said that he waited for so long. Um, he was a <laughs> quote how annoying. No one showed up. So you self, in, you fucking self entitled piece of fucking right. garbage! How annoying that no one has shown up for yeah, their murder. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. What the fuck, man? You <laughs> fucking privileged white piece of so garbage. So one article says he happened upon this woman while he was leaving, and another article says that he was. Uh, kneeling down, acting like he was praying when a woman finally walked in <clears throat> and knelt down to pray next to him. So this woman... Along came yeah, a victim. This woman sees him, though. <coughs> Here, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't wear a mask. He doesn't try to hide himself. He doesn't... Like, he's waiting mm-hmm. to pounce, yes, but he didn't do anything to, to conceal his his, his uh, identity or whatever. So this woman mm-hmm. sees him and comes and kneels down next to him. Mm-hmm. And then he promptly pulls the bayonet out of his jacket and uh, stabs her in the back, aiming for her heart. Mm. How because geez. the easiest way to get to a heart is through the back. I always heard a man's stomach, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's that's what I always heard, you know. And I, I just feel like that's a long way to go, and it's really messy. Like that would be mm-hmm. the messiest. Yeah, way I to mean, go. it's just like a lot of force, and then if they just ate, it's like you're picking up cheeseburgers for. A, just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's at this point it's obvious to investigators. I would think. Now it doesn't say that it is, but I would think. That it would be obvious mm-hmm. to investigators that this person had no idea <clears throat> what he or she was doing, but right uh, because it, it's it basically he stabbed her one time, aiming for the heart, assuming that it was going to kill her. It did not kill her. She didn't. Okay. Die. He rushed out of the church, and when <clears throat> it said that when he was a safe uh, thought he was a safe distance away, he licked the blood from the knife, and. Um, went on about his day all right it's time to go buy those crackers i've been looking at yeah so all the seriously injured and um you know clearly in shock or whatever but she did not die she was and can i can i just say that if you walk into a church and there's one person in the entire church kneeling and praying at a pew that you use the same etiquette that you would if you walked into a Walmart uh-huh. bathroom and there's one dude standing using a urinal and there are five urinals, you do not go to the urinal directly next to the one man Agreed. in the bathroom. You don't do it. So if there's one kid kneeling, praying at a pew, you don't go kneel right next to him. You do on principle He's got to stay. If you take nothing else from this from this story, take that from it. Seriously, mm. and this kid will uh, uh, he'll he'll make you he'll make you realize that at least one or two more times during the rest of this story. <laughs> I would have it no other way. Yeah. Uh, 
so yeah so so she didn't die though uh she was found by someone of of the church like a nun or some shit and um you know they contacted the hospital or the the blow whatever 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 they rushed her off she lived uh, and she was actually um she managed to recall for the police that her attacker had a red shield stitched on his jacket which uh indicated to them that he mm-hmm. was a high school student well then it's always good to wear very very noticeable <laughs> Clo- clothing with emblems that can be traced Seriously. to a specific place, especially if you are of age to belong to said organization, or uh, fucking stupid fuck, you go to that <laughs> high school. Don't wear your high school shirt with your fucking high school goddamn shield stitched. What is I'm wrong? I'm thinking I mean, that perhaps he made an unexpected, like, uh, an unscheduled stop on his way home. Uh, to a church for a stabbing yeah, with a bayonet? Yeah, he probably rushed, uh, the reason he rushed out of there is probably because he realized what time it was and, you know, he needed to still pick up milk and uh, some well, bread I mean, for mom. He had to get yeah. home, he had to get home before Dragon Ball exactly. Z came on. Exactly, and <clears throat> you know, if he if he would have spoiled his his dinner with too much blood, his mom would have got mad, you know. And then, yeah, fuck women. Yeah. Ugh. So, so Chris, uh, so Jeffrey Dahmer is having his mom over for dinner, right? <laughs> oh shit! And uh, <laughs> and his mom's like, Jeffrey, I I just don't like any of your friends, so. <laughs> Jeff Dahmer says, "Well, well, you can just eat the vegetables then." <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Oh my God, how have I never heard Best. that? I don't know. How have I never heard that? How is the <laughs> the love of my life that I've been living with for six to eight months never told me that? It's crazy. It's awesome knowing how mm. high up on our list he is of. Mm. Remarkable he's a, human it, beings. He, he's one of those how high up people that it's like yeah, he's almost untouchable mm-hmm. as of yet. It's like we we don't deserve him yet. But anyway, you know who we do deserve? Churchy Miss stabs a fucking lady in the back <laughs> guy. <laughs> so let's 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 well, find out the further the further adventures of Churchy Miss stabs a lady in the back guy. Dick Dastardly Junior. Over here. That's right. Mwahaha. <laughs> he had he had one of those little uh, uh you know raspy voiced laughing yeah. dogs, but then he but then he he tor- he tortured and, and killed it. So um, poor <laughs> I Muttley. fucking love it. Oh man. Oh fucking. <clears throat> so yeah, he um he was pretty proud of himself for that. Needless to say, uh, I think that's needless to say by this point. I think. Well, you know, when you <clears throat> the first time I beat uh, Contra, I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. I mean, speaking of, of that, uh, you know, we talked about uh, the code that this guy lives by, and uh, the code that I live by is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Yeah, you know, I used to live by that code, and then I uh, I found a new way. Um, I live by L Y X R B A now. <sighs> you fucking goddamn because it, it allows me to play uh, against myself just in alternate uniform you know yeah it's I mean but where's the challenge it's <laughs> well, like it's like it, it, you know if you ever meet yourself you, you're double you come across your doppelganger do you fight him or do you fuck him well yeah that's what I was gonna say I mean uh, you know don't don't get into an uh, uh, a naive game of uh, soggy biscuit or uh, okey cookie with your doppelganger I don't think there is I don't think there is a naive game of that <laughs> well uh, like hmm do you wanna just for just for jokes and stuff you wanna whip both of us whip our things out and then go on this biscuit hmm <laughs> <laughs> Gee golly, sir! I think England. that'd be just great. <laughs> what are you, uh, British? It's a cookie. <laughs> oh man, 
I just limp biscuit. I just I can't. No, I guess I did say soggy biscuit, didn't I? <laughs> I can't. You did. You did. And it's all just terrible. Yeah. It's all terrible ookiness you know, that no one no one wants and no one wants to do. It's all peer pressure and and terribleness and and just gross. You know, as a real adult now, I can't believe how as a, a real yeah, adult, I've, I've officially made it to the point of real adult now. I um. Uh, I, I, I can't believe how much, how long I was in denial about how gay he really is. Like, Limp Biscuit, really? And the chocolate starfish hot dog flavored water, really? Like, I can't believe. Like, I um, understood the, 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 uh. I mean, did, were you like, no, all guys, it's totally yeah, no, not. I was like, yeah, it's just a joke. He's just being were you, goofy. Were you, were you getting in bar fights over it? Like, defending no, him and shit? No, no, not, not to that point, but. It was mostly just to myself. Like, it's like finding out that fucking Santa's not real. It was very, very similar. Yeah, but as a teen, you know, that it was, it was my, it was my teen realization that Fred Durst is a cut <sighs> muncher. So, in the world of Cathedral McStabs in the back, yeah, he has finally tasted the fruits of his labor, human he blood. Has. And now he has a taste Off for it. Of the tip, the tip of the a bayonet. The vampire of crackles. The vampire of this. The vampire of that. Fucking be original, yeah. you cunt. Well, I mean, Polish, I guess, is as close to vampires, uh, you know, as original vampires as we've gotten so far. It should be like the Polish of vampires. <laughs> I wonder what kind of sausage a vampire would make. Blood yeah. sausage. It's too easy. <sighs> well, that's why it's easy, and that's why it's right. It's because it's that's. I mean, what else would it be? <sighs> it always lacks garlic, I think. But anyway, you know, I actually figured out it, it just in my own normal pondering and <laughs> contemplation uh, why What's vampires that? are allergic to garlic or why they can't have garlic. You know, because it why? never actually says it. Even if you read the lore, it doesn't actually say why they. You know, but right. I figured it out. It's because garlic's um, uh, homeopathic ability is that um, it helps clean your blood. And if vampire's huh. blood is dead, then you can't clean it. It just... Well, I mean, wouldn't it just be non-effective in any no, way, then? it would be the opposite. It would try to kill it. How, how would... It would be like that, acid that... in your veins. Oh, it would be the worst case like of the kind of acid that ever. you do, or no, 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 not that kind of. Oh, acid. okay, okay, because you like that in your veins, I hear. <laughs> I'm quite the fan. That's <sighs> why you. That's why you think homeopathy is a real thing. But go it's ahead. It's been like two months, three months, three months. Man, it's too long. Oh, you poor, it's poor baby. Anyway, uh, so moving on. Well, we got we we got time for one more victim. Um, I think, I mean, we're getting close, uh, but I think one more victim would do us just right before we have to, to say, we'll see you again next week for a part okay. two. All right. So this next victim, only a few days later, he posted up lying in wait at a tram stop. Okay. Now the first victim, she was, um, hmm doesn't say how old she was in this article but she was she was a little older i think she was in her 40s um this woman which it does not give her name uh she Mm -hmm. is 73 holy jesus fuck so she got off the tram and she was walking home and paid no mind to the little fucking freak vampire douche pickle that's uh, trailing right behind her. Just like mm-hmm. it ain't no thing. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, she's like, fuck you. I'm fucking 80 something years old. I'm yeah. walking here. You can walk behind me all you want. You're just going to have to be smelling my silent, flapping <laughs> farts. <laughs> ain't afraid of no little white kid. <clears throat> so, but mm, little did she know, she had quite a bit to be afraid of. Mm. So he followed her all the way up to her front door. Okay. See, that's when you you got to be like, hmm, 
Maybe I should have walked to the police station instead. Yet again, not fucking covering himself or hiding the fact that he is a fucking high school student. Little Mm -hmm. prick fucker. Um, uh, yeah, just, just all out in the open, like it ain't no thing. Follows her up to her front door, and, uh, as she opens it, um... He pulls out his knife and stabs her in the back. Um, and he assumed oh, right. that that it was that this one killed her because she fell down the stairs. Well, yeah, she's an elderly woman that just was stabbed yeah. in the back, which I like to refer to as a coward stabbing. Pretty much, yeah. He didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what his specific aim is. I think it's at this point, it's just to get him in the heart. I think he's really just aiming yeah, for the back. Yeah, he's just trying stuff is really what it is. He's just trying different stuff. You know, you got, you got to see what works, man. This is his experimental exactly. phase. Exactly. This is his, uh, this is, you know, he's, he's trying out some new wave mixed with maybe a little mm-hmm. emo. And then, you know, he's, he's going to get heavier and he's going to get harder. But right now... You got to see. You got to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. That's what it is. See what and then, sticks. And then afterwards, you should really clean your wall because you've been throwing <laughs> shit at it. See what sticks in your back. <sighs> so, hmm. this old lady fell down the stairs, and he was he he was just sure of himself this time that he killed her. So he hauled ass. He left. Uh, licking the blood off the blade yet again um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yet again she did not die he is very bad at murdering yeah, so far he needs to be a little more thorough if he's gonna continue his but, work I mean, like this right now is is it known that he, i mean is his aim murder or is it licking the blood uh from a stab no, his aim is definitely mm-hmm. murder. Okay, so he, he certainly intended uh, for these these ladies certainly. to die. Okay, Most certainly okay, okay. is what this that is his end game is to kill these women. Um, <laughs> he just isn't sticking around long enough to make sure the job is done and that he actually hit the points he needs to because mm-hmm. he's a, he's a little sloppy. There was you know? an old it's lady. First. There was it. There was an old lady who fell down the stairs. <laughs> I don't know why she fell down the stairs. Perhaps she'll die. Hopefully. Uh, no, but instead, uh, she really never, it says she never regained full health. She actually broke her spine and legs. Mm. And was left paralyzed. Wow. That is quite the tumble. Well, she was already brittle. I was about to say, I... I hate to say it like this, but I think if he had never run up and stabbed her in the back, I don't think she would have fully recovered just from her. Pretty sure you're right. You know? What she... Do do, do any of us ever fully recover, Chris? <laughs> from being stabbed in the back and breaking our spine and legs? No. I think I think just from being alive oh, today. Oh, yeah, no. You know? No, no, no. We're not meant to, though. Mm-hmm. No, we don't... No. We don't have fuck you money. Not yet we don't. I'm working on it. Not yet we don't. Yep. But, um... Hmm. Now, I mean, one thing, though, that she did recover was, uh... The memory that she saw a young man. That that it was done, perpetrated by a young man. So now... I believe he was Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, hmm. dark hair. Um, so now, yeah, up until this point, the cops know that they're looking for a high school student. They're looking for a young dude with dark hair. That's all they know. They <clears throat> also have realized that uh, nothing was stolen. Um, I mean, her ability to walk? Well, I mean, that was... I wouldn't say stolen. I would say... Mm, Torn away from her? Forcibly liberated. Forcibly liberated. That is the nicest way 
I've ever heard <laughs> someone say steal. Yeah. I like it. It's almost like, you know, no, I helped you. I forcibly liberated you from the ability to yeah, walk. It's like have fun getting great parking spaces from now yeah, on. It's like I ripped the band-aid off for you so you don't have to worry about you know. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm, bringing mm -hmm, yourself mm -hmm. to do it. Man. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Like I, I know it. how bad you wanted to be paralyzed. So mm -hmm. but you weren't going to throw yourself yep. down those stairs, you know. So I helped mm -hmm. you out. <sighs> so I believe that um, children are our future. <laughs> yes, Whitney. Uh, now that that's that's what we're gonna call it for now. We're we're just gonna yeah we're gonna call it right there. So yeah, I did. The cops yet. know it's not a theft, and they know they're looking for a little dude. So basically, the cops. Um, I mean, I, they know. I'm guessing which high school he goes to? Strangely, no. Huh. I'm guessing... <coughs> uh, a, oh, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Sorry. That cough pierced the inside of my brain. I apologize. I, and I, I tried to hold <coughs> the microphone. Pre pretty sure I forgot science now. <laughs> you just forgot science. So every every school in Poland is a red shield for high school, I'm guessing, because <laughs> otherwise must be a few in that area, I guess. Yeah. Oh. That so was my initial thought. They know they're too. looking for. <laughs> they know they're looking. For, see, what I would have done is I would have uh, stolen the shirt from a, a different school. There you go. You know, and then I would have murdered wearing that shirt. That way, ha ha. Not today, Kappa. Yep. You know? Stolen some whatever douchebag that's picking on you's fucking uh, uh, PE uniform. Mm -hmm. Or like his football mm -hmm. jersey mm -hmm. or some shit. Well, I mean, if you took his PE uniform, you wouldn't be able to hide your awkward boner. <laughs> that's true. Or uh, I'm thinking 1965 Poland. Uh, yeah, you may not be able to hide your oh. nuts at the bottom of those short asshole shorts either. I can't picture now Poland. How are you picturing 1965 Poland? I'm just picturing Poland. how short shorts were in general in 1965 and adding the word oh, Poland man. to it. <laughs> it's just, it's men with camel toe yep. all day. Yep, yep. Mm. and weird white just guy froze. the worst. And mm -hmm. mustaches. Why the mm -hmm. mustaches? Yeah, no more mustaches, please. <laughs> Mustache. So, Chris, I like it. I like it, and I like where we are because he's just now, uh, I mean, you know, maybe he's uh, getting into the swing of things. You know, he's he's uh, taking a few swats at it, and he thinks he's tough shit, but you know what? He'll find out that there's always room to grow, except in a high school gym uniform. <laughs> except in a high school gym uniform. That's perfect. I approve that message. Oh, well, I hope you approve this message too, Chris. You've just listened to a I wonder how much I'm going to leave in episode of See No, Hear No, Speak No. The UFOs, the conspiracies, the coffee in my fucking mattress now. So many dog barks too. It's Indeed. happening now. And why does? Mm. That was fun. I thought so. I hope the kids liked it. Countdown. Tres. Three. Two. One. One. Good night, kids. Dogs! <laughs>